I thought I'd begin today um, with some poetry that provides me meaning during times that are difficult. These are the poems of Leah Goldberg, specifically the translations from Rachel Tzvia Back, um, her book, On the Surface of Silence. And I've been thinking a lot about how at this time, we're either bombarded by a lot of news um, and life can feel very, very loud. Or for many of us that might be alone in isolation or experiencing isolation in a very lonely fashion, it could be a very quiet time. So there's this set of opposites of the loud noise um, the information seeking that we have and the quiet. And I thought I'd share two selections today. It's a beautiful rainy day here where I live. Um, and in my backyard, I see hummingbirds and nature and the ecosystem is, uh, there's hummingbirds right now. Um, the ecosystem is still moving, regardless of how loud or quiet the world may be. And while there's a crisis amongst the humans, um, for the rest of the world, it may be a quiet or loud time. Um, so these poems from this collection uh, were the very last poems that she wrote. Um, she's a woman who went to Palestine from Russia she was raised uh, learning Hebrew in a Jewish type of day school in Prussia um, and became one of the most uh, illustrious uh, poets and authors and children's book writers in Israel. And then ultimately, um, as she came close to death, like many of the famous Israeli poets, her, her poetry shifted in its conversation with us, the reader. So the book it itself, the collection, is called On the Surface of Silence, but many of her final poems have no title whatsoever. Um, and I always find that inspiring when we find pieces of art or poetry that don't have titles that allow us to draw from the meaning, from the poem, the piece that stands out to us the most. My great teacher, Rabbi Richard Levy always told me to look at a piece of Torah with, um, with an eye towards what sparkled to me that day. And so sometimes I think that an unnamed poem is like an invitation. It's an invitation for us to find the piece of the poem that should be the title for us in that moment. So I'm going to read um, this poem that is unnamed. And I think it speaks to the weight, uh, the heaviness of the moment right now, um, but the living reality that we're all going through. And um, I'll just read it. In everything, there is at least an eighth part that is death. Its weight is not great. With what secret and carefree grace we carry it, wherever we go, on lovely awakenings, on hikes, in lover's words, in distraction, forgotten at the edges of our being, always with us. And it hardly weighs us down. And I'll try the Hebrew. Bechod varyesh lefachot shminit shel mavet. Mishkalo eno gadol, Be'eze chen tamir v'she'anan nisa oto el kol asher nelech. Bikitsot yafot, b'tiulim, b'tsiach ohavim. Be'hesach da'at, nishkach b'yarkte haviatinu tamid itanu ve'eno machvid. So for me, in here, there's the death, and in the death, there's this weight. But on the opposite side of the weight, there's a lightness as well. And so for me, I thought there was a lot that can help guide me through this moment. I'm going to read the English one more time, and then I'm going to read 
A second piece that comes a few pages later in the collection that's about silence. In everything, there is at least an eighth part that is death. Its weight is not great with what secret and carefree grace we carry it wherever we go. On lovely awakenings, on hikes, in lovers' words, in distraction, forgotten at the edges of our being, always with us, and it hardly weighs us down. I think what strikes me right now is also that this blessing of a life means that there's always going to be death. Um, that the definition of a live being, a living being, is that everything that lives dies. And often when we have to teach about death to children or about life cycles, we have to remind them that leaves die, animals and creatures die, plants die, fruit trees die, and that people also die. Um, and with the blessing of life also comes death at the end of the cycle. Um, and in Judaism, it can also mean that at the end of that death, there could be an eternal life with God. So here's the second uh, Leah Goldberg poem. If you're just joining us, I am sharing some selections from this book by, that was translated by Rachel Tzvia Back, and it's called On the Surface of Silence, the last poems of Leah Goldberg, one of the great poets of Israel. And um, this piece really strikes me in this moment um, where things are both very loud and very quiet at the same time. Already the silences are easy. The light is bright. When there are no roads, there's no fear of borders. And there's nothing to reveal when there's nothing to hide. Kfar hashtikot kalot ha'or bahir kshe'en drachim ein pachad migvulot ve'en ma legalut kshe'en ma lehastir so there's nothing to reveal when there's nothing to hide. Um, I think that what a lot of us are suffering from right now is that there is so much unknown about the state, the situation, the place we are, the moment we are, the virus itself. And so there's both a lot of talk and a lot of silence. And we experience where we are. Um, so I'm just teaching life. <laughs> so just this balance between, you're gonna have to give me a minute, okay? I'm sorry? Yes. Okay, the important things. <laughs> um, so I, I think I was talking about um, the silence and the noise and that when there's something that's very unknown that we're both trying to understand and interpret and get more information while we're sitting with what is just an overall silence that there is just this unknowing right now and and that is the for me that's the hardest thing to sit with is the unknown i'm a planner i like to have things set out before me so um the poet encourages us to have the silence become more easy. And I think part of that silence is the embrace of the unknown. Um, the light is bright, there's no roads, so there's no borders. Um, there's nothing to reveal when there's nothing to hide. So my uh, wish for all of us on this really beautiful, graceful, rainy day in Los Angeles is, um, is to seek comfort in that silence, to try to have some sense of sitting with the unknown and to be unafraid of the silence, but to also be unafraid of the noise and to try our best to, to sit with it, 
to live through it, to take care of one another, to seek the light where we can. So wishing you a day of, if you're wanting that noise, that answer, that call, a day of the proper amount of noise and sound. And if what you seek today is silence and perhaps turning off the radio or putting the newspapers down, I wish you that day of silence, uh, that way of finding peace and blessing um, and embracing really that, that place in between, in between the loud and in between the silent. So Yom Tov, a good day. Thanks for joining me.